Hi. <clears throat> gay is not sin, and Jesus is not asking the gay person to change and be straight. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus is returning soon. <clears throat> But you got to be careful in who you listen to because he's not going to come at any minute. So we need to be ready. We got to understand why Jesus came, why God sent Jesus and gave him to the world because he was worthy. He lived without sin. And when they crucified him on the cross, he was, he climbed up on that cross to die for your sin because we can't get ourselves forgiven. There's nothing we can do to get forgiven of sin but Jesus died and his blood shed for you is able to wash you clean of your sins <clears throat> and all we have to do is believe that God sent him that Jesus is God's son and he died on the cross for your sins and if you believe that and ask Jesus to forgive you then God will impute Jesus's righteousness into you and you'll have eternal life. Now, a lot of people are trying to scare people to get saved. And I kind of don't like that I did too much, you know. I mean, it's basically true. You, If you accept Jesus, you're going to live forever. So no matter what happens, if you die or something happens to you, you're going to live forever. You get a new spiritual body. <clears throat> But to come to Jesus just to escape the bad things that are coming, like we're experiencing a pretty bad thing now in this uh, pandemic, and then we're, we're experiencing this a cultural change that is long overdue, but it's really, uh, it could expand the, the, the virus and make that last longer or get worse. We don't know these things, but what we do know is that it seems like every day there's something new happening that's sort of scary in a way that we would certainly like to miss all this. And the Bible tells us it doesn't get better, that it gets worse. So if you're hearing your pastor or somebody else telling you, it's gonna get better. Well, if anything gets better, it'll be, and mildly better because according to the Bible, this is just the birth pains and birth pains don't end until the baby's born. And when the baby's born, that's when Jesus returns and takes us all back to heaven. And so if you're looking to see that, oh, maybe this coronavirus will get over with and these uh, protesters were all Get settled and and we'll get back to normal. Everybody get back to work and it'll be just like it never happened. And we can go on years of relatively peace before the uh, next event. Well, those of you that believe Jesus is going to come soon has got to realize before Jesus returns, it ain't going to get better. You're not going to have long periods of time of peace and quiet and, and happiness, as it were. You're going to be in birth pains, and those birth pains won't get over until the baby's born. And that's how God describes, or Jesus describes, the end time which we're living in. Once Israel became a nation, which was in 1948, that started a bunch of things because the nation of Israel was scattered all around the world. And then at one point, masses of them were being killed during World War II. Who could have believed that not long after that, Israel would be a nation again and people, Jews would flock to Israel. And now it's pretty much a pretty powerful nation. One of, that's up there in the top of the military forces and also producing all kinds of scientific wonders and health wonders and coming up with more of them that's going to be pretty amazing. Just like the Bible says, Israel blessed the world 
And of course, uh, those that bless Israel will be blessed and those that curse Israel will be cursed. So we have these things that we got to understand. It doesn't pass away. It doesn't stop just because things are going relatively well. Well, of course, we're living in a time that things are not going relatively well. Uh, some leaders of ours, the top leaders, are saying, let's get back to normal. And... Uh, but as other, the doctors and scientists are telling us, we don't determine getting back to normal. We want to get back to normal, we're going to take the consequences. And so we have what birth pains are meant to do, not be necessarily fun. It's going to hurt. And the Bible does tell us masses of people are going to be killed during this time, not die of old age. I mean, people are going to die of old age like always, but but there's masses of people, up to half the world population before Jesus returns, will be killed. <clears throat> and maybe that's only in the first half of the tribulation. So when we're looking out, we saw Israel became a nation, and then in 1967, Jerusalem became belonged to Israel again. And now in 2020, 30% of the West Bank is going to belong to Israel again, starting July 1st. We'll see when July 1st comes along, if that actually happened. But that's set to happen. Uh, all sources involved are stating it's going to happen then. So we're going to see, come July 1st, if 30% of the West Bank becomes part of the state of Israel. And we got something called the deal of the century. And the Arab countries are calling this that, calling it this. And they're quite happy with the the plan. And you know who makes the plan, the deal of the century, it's supposed to be the greatest deal maker ever, as he tells us, you know, Trump making the deal of the century over there in Israel. So, you know, you Bible scholars and everything, what does the Bible say about the peace plan that is going to set off the tribulation period? Doesn't it tell us the author of that is Antichrist? So if this peace deal really is going to work, and so far it seems like it is, all the criteria for it, Israel had to be, uh, Netanyahu had to get his, uh, government, and he did. He There was two elections before that, and then he couldn't get gathered together a government, but now he has. And with that in place, he can now go along with Trump's deal. And as I said, all the Arab countries around there want that to happen. They want Israel to be sovereign and powerful enough, therefore, keeping the peace. Because they know Israel isn't out to make war. That, but they are out to defend themselves if anybody wants to attack them. And a lot of people might think, well, doesn't Palestine have, Palestinians have anything to say about it? Well, they can if they want to get involved. Right now they don't want to get involved, but the peace plan, the police, the peace plan is going through. And Generally, if the Palestinians don't do anything, the Palestinians will be better off by a lot. There's going to be a lot of money pumped into there. There's going to be a new airport. There's going to be new factories. And uh, the goal is to set up uh, Palestine to be like a Singapore. And so they should end up being quite comfortable as is. But if they want some little extra benefits, they got to get involved in the peace plan uh, to give their little say so they can maybe add a benefit or two in there. But it's happening. So if this is that deal, then it seemed like as a Christian, you should know who Antichrist is. So far, the prophecy teachers that are teaching um, on this uh, peace deal that's supposed to be made that will start the tribulation period, they say, yes, Trump is making it, and it's probably going to work and everything, but somehow or another, they cut out the scripture that says, the person doing it is Antichrist. 
So that means if this deal goes through, you know as a Christian who Antichrist is before he's revealed. He won't actually reveal himself to about the middle of the tribulation period, which is three and a half years after it starts. But as Christians who should be knowing the Bible, should know, I believe it's Daniel uh, 9, 27, uh, says <clears throat> that Antichrist is going to make a covenant with uh, Israel. And those that know and study this covenant type meaning says there's about five categories that needs to be included in it to make this the deal that the Bible is talking about. And Trump's deal covers them. It only exception to that is one of those parts of the deals is would probably cover the temple being built. But as is in the peace plan, it says that all religions have the right to go on the mount, the temple mount, to worship. And they have to be given the ability to worship according to their faith. So Muslims can worship there. Well, they're pretty much doing that already. And they have that, the Dome of the Rock there. to, So they have their everything that's helping them out. Christians really don't need a whole much. They just go up there, Bible in hand maybe, and, and do some praying. Jews, they need a temple. And the, the, the peace plan calls for whatever it is that will facilitate the worshiping of whatever religion goes there, then that's permitted. Well, then that means the temple will have to be built. And that's a pretty easy thing. They could build it easily within three years. And they have all the furniture that's supposed to go in it. They have all the priests trained and all the, all the requirements, the blueprints, whatever. They could just send the bulldozers in, start building. <clears throat> and Israel is preparing in hotels and transportation. They're building new railroad system to to deliver people because in the Jewish uh, culture, they're required by Moses' law to go to the temple three times a year and to offer sacrifice. So sacrifices will be reimposed. Uh, but it is estimated over 3 million people are going to be going to Israel at these particular seasons of time, three times a year. So they need a way to transport them around in a place they can stay. So this infrastructure is being done today. And uh, also one important factor before Jews can actually go up on the Temple Mount to worship is they got to be purified because there is a particular sacrifice that needs to be done because if you have come in contact or touched a dead person, which generally speaking in some way or another in the lifetimes of Israel, just about every Israelite did it. So they need to have a sacrifice that can they can pour over everybody and enough of it to make this forgiveness. And it, Moses' law requires that a red hefner be sacrificed. Well, there's been nine red Hefners, and the last one was 2,000 years ago, and they haven't been able to make another one or uh, breed another one ever since, until the last couple of years they've actually got one, and so now they're waiting to see if it develops any blemishes, and uh, it takes up to two years that they can verify that this red Hefner is qualified. And they've already tested things on other Hefners to see if one Hefner um, manipulated enough and mixed up and whatever after they burn it and, and do whatever they need to do to make what is the lawful sacrifice that they can pour on to people. And they found out one Hefner can easily cover way more than the population of Israel. 
So it can cover everybody. And so one Hefner will do, and that Hefner should be getting pretty close to being able to be verified as uh, able to make be sacrificed for the sins of um, people that have contacted in some way or another dead people. Then Israel can go in there and start building the temple. So these things, everything is lining up more than any other time of the history. And so it's exciting that so many things. And now we got these birth pains that before, you know, we have earthquakes here and wars and a lot of various ingredients of the end times as, as uh, Matthew 24 tells us. And I believe Luke 21 repeats that. Uh, that we're, this kind of timing and everything for this kind of a plague and this kind of a march, you know, even the protesters isn't stuck to a city or even the nation. We've had protests that covered the whole nation, but they didn't go into all the world. And now we're seeing huge protest marches in all kinds of parts of the world. It's just amazing that this kind of thing could go so big. Now, probably it's a good thing, get us all aware of, of our prejudices and everything. And there's a big prejudice that still hasn't been touched. There, there's been a little spike maybe because the Supreme Court just uh, said that you can't f not hire somebody just because they're gay or transgender. And of all things, it's a conservative su Supreme, Court, su Supreme Court. So that's pretty amazing. How did that ever happen? But what I believe God's been showing me is it's not going to be simply a secular approval of gays, as it were. Because that's, that's already happened, which I thought was utterly impossible because it was 0% supportive of gay when I started this TV ministry. And now it's just amazing how supportive secular is uh, um, towards gays. Every time I go out anywhere with my husband, uh, who sadly passed away not too long ago. Um, we were so blessed. It was amazing how the way we were treated wherever we went. It was really fabulous. But there's still one thing that's not happening, and that is church leaders still will not let go of their hatreds. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, but church leaders at least are hating their neighbor and there's going to be a consequence the, the cup of that wrath is almost full and when it gets full then God's going to move and God has promised me that before he comes back for the rapture that his people will accept gays they will realize gay is not sin and accept him as full bona fide members of the body of Christ now so far, it seemed like when I run into ordinary Christians, I'd no ever find any of them that condemn gays. Well, one or two from time to time. Pastors I find. And group leaders I find. Uh, that, I mean, and, and the thing is, they don't sit there when they find somebody's gay, they don't sit there and love their neighbor. Instead, they say, you're going to hell. How could you dare be in my group? Or, look, I've studied so much. I got this PhD in theology and everything, and it's absolutely certain these words mean something else, even though you can find equally significant information that says, no, those words don't mean gay as you're saying it does. In fact, people that lived, scholars that lived in the day of Jesus says the particular words that the church today thinks means gays means temple prostitute. 
And that's what I've said for these past 30, uh, five some years on TV. Because gay is not sin. And the 14 verses used by the church, which seven of them refer to this word sodomite, does not mean gays. It means male temple prostitute. That means a person that is selling his body for sex in a religious thing, in a ritually worship to other gods, which were in Jesus' day and, and Paul's day. All the religions of those days were fertility, almost to a T. And they had their ritual orgy rooms, and the most sacred of the, the prostitutes were male temple prostitutes. And... So, people, you got to get to figure out we're living in the time that things are going to happen. We may not see things get better. We might see a little bit better and think all is well. And then what will we do? Forget that we're living in birth pains? So you got to expect something more is going to happen. And not very long after this is over, they don't even think this is going to get over anytime soon. Uh, some people think it doesn't even exist, but <laughs> just go to the hospital. And uh, But the first step is to start to get to know who Jesus really is. If you don't know Jesus, accept Jesus, believe in him, read the Bible. Jesus paid the price for his sin. We're all sinners. The wages of sin is death. You cannot get yourself forgiven. There's nothing you could do, nothing you can earn, no way whatsoever in any way that you can pay the price for your sins. But Jesus can, and he could pay the price for every human being that's ever lived. He could pay their price of their sin. And it's really simple and easy. You just believe that God sent him, gave him to us to climb up on that cross and shed his blood for our sins. And when he shed his blood for our, our sins, God imputes righteousness into us. So that means afterwards, and a lot of people start pointing fingers as you're doing this, you're doing this, you're living in constant sin. And, and maybe some of you think, oh, I've sinned. I can't get through. My prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. That doesn't happen, people. You're righteous. When God looks at you, you're righteous. So you're prayer ready. That doesn't mean go out and sin all like crazy. You just ask God, help you. Renew your spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He renews your spirit. So you'll be like Jesus. So... Pray the prayer. God, I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for my sins. Come into my life and forgive me of my sins. So a simple prayer gets you saved. Now, read the Bible. I would start with, in the King James Version, the book of John. And ask Jesus to baptize in your Holy Spirit, because this is tough times, like I've been saying. And you need to be able to endure to the end. And the way you do that is get baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come into you so that Jesus is living and you can feel him close into you. And you'd be surprised how well you can feel him and know him. And this gives you power to minister, power to live each day and endure to the end, which you need. And part of this baptism in the Holy Spirit is gifts of healing, which has never passed away. None of the gifts of the Spirit has actually ever passed away. Some just has not been used as much, but you could be healed right now. So do you got a place of pain? I mean it. Do you got a place of pain? I want you to put your hand on that place of pain right now. You got it there? In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now go to my website. Uh, I come on every week the same time you're watching now. But go to my website and help me out a little. Press the donate button or the GoFundMe button. Give me a call or email me. See you next time.